Hello! Welcome to this week's video. Uh, for this week, I'm going to be doing my wrap-up for the month of February. And um, for this month, again, it's primarily paperbacks, ebooks. You still haven't got me. Like, I haven't had luck with ebooks this month. Um, and I think it's because I have my TBR, my paperback TBR, that's my paperback TBR. And then I have my ebook TBR, which is like a gazillion times that. So I'm trying to get through that one as well. And it's because I have so many books to catch up on. Uh, there's that saying, life's too short to read bad books. And these aren't necessarily bad books in the sense of like, they're like, you know, horrible. It's just, I give them like a chapter or two. If they don't grab me, move on. Um, and yeah, I just, because I have so many books to get to, I don't have time to like force myself to fit. There are people who they, if they get a book, they force themselves to finish. And that's great if that's how you do you, but that's not how I do me. I, I just, yeah, if, if it doesn't grab me, I just move on. Um, so it's paperbacks that have been primarily uh, grabbing me uh, for the past couple of months. And um, you no, know, I miss, yeah, I'm getting through my <laughs> book TBR because I'm, you know, getting a few and then like not, they're not grabbing me and then I move on. And so I'm making my way down the list, but I'm not finding uh, the gems that I have in the past. Um, and it's just not happening. So. Uh, we'll get to the books that I have read, though there are two DNFs in them. But I gave them a decent, decent shot, and uh, we'll get, yeah, let's get to the DNFs first, because those will probably be quick, quicker. Uh, the first one, my first DNF, I got a few chapters in, and I'm sad about it, because it's, um... A historical fiction, Sins of the House of Borgia. Now, I wanted to love this book. I wanted to love this book because I loved the show. I loved this show so much. Um, however, I remember when it was on air, and I remember watching season one. I don't remember watching seasons two and three, I think because, you know, life got in the way and like stuff happens and you just, I lost track of it. And so I, then I found out there were three seasons, so I'm still going to watch seasons two and three. Thank you, Lord Jesus, or more important, more um, accurately, maybe thank you, 24, the TV show 24, which gave us our first TV shows on DVDs so that now I am able to watch uh, season two and season three of the Borgias when I get them because DVDs are a thing. Uh, so that's wonderful and I'm very much looking forward to that. But because I love the show, I was so looking forward to loving this book and it just didn't happen because it's a good book. I will not say that it's not. Um, but I just found the writing style just did not work for me. It just didn't, and it was just, I found it hard to focus on the, the, the developing story because her writing style, Sarah Bauer, Oh, Bauer, <laughs> 24. It's a different spelling, though. But um, it just, her writing style, she has these, like, run-on sentences. And I mean run-on sentences that just, it's hard to concentrate because your brain just, like, it's hard to follow, I found, with the run-on sentences. I like a good run-on sentences sentence. Don't get me wrong. I am a fan of the run-on sentence in general, 
but you've got to like break it up break it up with like the like the shorter sentences and like just simple sentences and it's just no this book like it was just the run on sentences i couldn't just the structure just like completely i couldn't focus and she ha okay i know that in that time you had uh you had like the person's name and then you had their title and you know, but the going back and forth between the titles and like her name and her fake name and just the different names for like one person it was hard to follow who was talking to who and who was talking about who because one one point she'd use like uh let let's say yeah one point she'd use cesare and then in another point she call she talk about the duke of this and the duke of that and it turns out he, she was talking about cesare but we didn't know like you couldn't focus on that because there are so many dukes you'd forget what duke she was talking about and it wasn't until like the next chapter that you realized that she was talking about the dude so i found that really hard to follow and yes i understand like historically yes they had many titles and blah 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 but in my opinion if you're trying if you're writing a fiction novel and you're trying to like draw the reader in don't confuse the reader just call him cesare just call him the the pope rodrigo just or or, or alexander just call you know Julia Farnese, Julia Farnese. Just call Lucrezia, Lucrezia. Don't use like six, seven different names. And like, it just, it was just confusing. So I just, I wanted to love this book. I wanted to love this book so much because it's about this Jewish girl who becomes a maid servant to Lucrezia, Lucrezia Borgia. Um, and she has to hide the fact that she's Jewish um, and get baptized as a Catholic to, you know, serve. Um, and then she um, begins an affair with Cesare Borgia. Now, I can understand that because, <laughs> I'm sorry, look how pretty that boy is. Look how pretty this boy is. So yes, I can understand. However, if you're giving him like six, seven different titles, I don't know who you're talking about unless you call him Cesare. So it it was just it was too hard to follow what was happening in the book. So unfortunately, that was a DNF. My next DNF is also also disappointing because in general i love jeffrey archer i loved you know his, his cain and abel uh series love it love it love it i love like he has it's usually like these um rags to riches about these like men who you know like they start off poor and then they like uh build their way up to success and there's these like dramatic plots and melodrama and all this stuff and I was on board. I made it like at least halfway, halfway. I will tell you to the point I made it and what made me stop. Now, I made my peace with the fact that the main character's name was Charlie Trumper. Now, this was written 1991. So I'm not sure if he was modeling the character after Trump, <laughs> but I tried to like, just look past that, look past that. Well, if he was, then it was wrong because this kid, like he, he inherited his, his um, grandfather's, you know, fruit, food business and then uh, grew it into like this, these like series of like successful department stores and stuff. And, you know, like he actually worked for his success, unlike, unlike Sweet Potato Hitler. But all you Trump supporters, uh, you're fine. I, I'm fine if you turn off now. 
but I put a pin in the fact that his last name was Trumper. Um, and yeah, I looked past that. Um, but yeah, he, um, he inherits the business and, um, his father wasn't like the biggest, like he wasn't, uh, driven or ambitious or like anything like that. He was sort of a loser, but his father goes to war and, um, ends up dying, um, in the war. And then this spurs Charlie on to want to go and fight in the war as well. Uh, so he becomes friends with this guy, um, Thomas, I think his name was, his name was Thomas, um, and they, they are under the command of this, uh, captain or general named Guy. Now, Guy is an asshole. Guy is just an asshole, and he doesn't like, um, Thomas, what's his name? Thomas, damn it. Let me see. I'm tr it's bothering me, so I have to. Yeah, Tom, Tommy Thomas. Um, and they're in battle, and um, Tommy is, they're, they're, uh, they're in the, the trenches, and or they're headed for the trenches, and um, it's Charlie, Guy and 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 um, Tommy, and Tommy gets shot. Tommy gets shot officially by an enemy bullet. Charlie knows that his own captain or general, Guy, is the one that shot Tommy. Charlie knows this, but he doesn't say anything. Um, because I guess like they can't prove it. And uh, so they sort of like go their own ways, but uh, they end up meeting again, Charlie and Guy, um, years later, and there's definitely like animosity between them. Um, and the whole time, I'm like, my 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 hope is that this is building towards a showdown between Guy and Charlie, because Guy ends up dating uh, Charlie's business partner, Becky, who um, Charlie eventually falls in love with, uh, but she at first like only sees him as a friend because she's all about Guy, but Guy is this asshole who like uses her and gets her pregnant and then like abandons her. Um, and then Charlie agrees to uh, marry her and, and give the, the baby his name. So baby goes up, believing that uh, Charlie is his father, and I'm I'm thinking that like there's gonna be this like big showdown between Charlie and Guy eventually. That's not what happens. I stopped reading when off the page, like off screen, let's say, you find out that Charlie, or excuse me, that Guy dies of um tuberculosis or at least that's what his bitchy mother wants everybody to think because she's all about appearances and she has like she's this grade a bitch who uh had given gee everything he's ever wanted in life raised him to be the spoiled asshole um and so when he dies she tells everybody that it was of tuberculosis turns out no <laughs> turns out off, again, off screen, let's say, we're told this second hand, that Guy actually died in prison. He hung himself in prison uh, after he was imprisoned for killing his wife. So there's no showdown with Charlie. All, like, and then I skimmed the rest to see, like, what the happens for, like, the second half of the book. And it's just, he finds this daughter of her, of his, and it's her discovering that Guy was her father. And I'm like, what about, like, Daniel? I, 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 did I miss that? Like, I, admittedly, I skimmed the last half, but I didn't see no big reveal with uh, Rebecca's son finding out that 
Guy and not Charlie was his father. And it was just this, this off kilter storyline of this girl being told that Guy was her father. And I'm just like, why? Why am I supposed to care about anything that happened in the second half of this book? You just took away what the, the journey of this man was building to. Like, I didn't, like, I didn't see no, no justice for poor Tommy, who, uh, he killed. I, like, it was just, it was disappointing. I, I don't understand. Yeah, that was just, as the crow flies, Jeffrey Archer did not work for me, unfortunately. Uh, the two that did, and they did, uh, we'll start with A Twist in Time by Susan Squires. And this was this girl, what was her name again? Lucy, yes. So Lucy is friends with this guy, Brad. And Lucy, I believe, works in a bookstore. And one day this girl comes in, this woman comes in and gives her a book. A book of, from the supposedly Leonardo da Vinci wrote um, about a time machine. And they end up finding this time machine. And Lucy and Brad and this dude, Casey, uh, want to see if it works. So they boot it up and what do you know, it works. So Lucy gets sent back in time for like a minute and gets the first thing <laughs> when she comes to is she's involved in a like bloody bloody battle there's a bloody battle going on and she there's then this guy sees her this viking and like you know tries to protect her from this other guy who like sees her and wants to like kill her or like do unspeakable things to her but this guy protects her and she is like okay, this is, we know it works, I don't want to die, get me out of here, and she's like, what, tries to like, go back and like, send, send herself back uh, to the present day. A uh, little hiccup though, she ends up bringing the Viking guy, the nice Viking guy, uh, with her when she makes the move to, to come back to the future, <laughs> go back to her present. So he ends up falling through with her, and, oh, Galen is his name, and he, it is this wonderful sort of, um, fish out of water, like, all the, the, all the awesome things you, we love about our time travel romances, um, and it's a bit of a, again, like, a little bit of a twist in that, like, you usually hear about the woman going back and falling in love with the Highlander, and then she has to marry him because Black Jack Randall is going to kill her if she doesn't, and she, but she wants to go back to her husband and Frank in the future, and, wrong book, <laughs> wrong book, um, and that's how Outlander happened, uh, but this is not Outlander, this is, um, the story of what a lot of Outlander fans wish would happen, where Jamie comes to the future. But Diana has insisted that that will never happen. Fine. Fine. But in this one, the hero does come back, come to the future. And, um, it's, it's wonderful. It's like, you get all the, like, the stuff that you enjoy about like, the fish out of water, and he's, like, trying to figure out modern technology and that kind of stuff, and it's all fun. Um, and, but it's balanced with, like, this plot of them now trying to get him back to his time. Um, and, but the thing is, they can't get to the machine because the people who have the machine, they can't get a torque because the machine is broken because Lucy and Galen somehow ended up with the diamond that they needed to make the machine work. So the gem thing is sort of like the same as, as Outlander. Um, but yeah, so they have people after them who want to kill them. 
And in the middle of that, they fall in love and it's beautiful. And I, um, I really enjoyed the ending. Um, I'm not going to spoil, but um, I like how, again, they stayed with like the, the, the different twist of like, you know, usually like it's the woman that goes back and she's all like, oh, um, I'm going to stay here with you forever. And like, this is, you know, I'm the one who's going to give up my life for you kind of thing. Um, and this uh, was a different version of that. Um, so I really, really liked it. A Twist in Time by Susan Squires for a um, something a little different for those of us who, who love time travel romances. Totally recommend. Loved it. And this one, oh, this one was just wonderful. Uh, and I talked about it a little before uh, in my last uh, wrap up in what I was talking about what I'm currently reading and what I was currently reading then and I finished was Somewhere in France by Jennifer Robson. I love this book. <laughs> I love this book so much. Um, which, uh, and I think I mentioned that I had read another um, Jennifer Robson book after the war that did not work for me and it was Charlotte and Edward. And this is the story of Edward's sister, Lily, who Charlotte becomes a tutor to, to a tutor to. Um, and Lily is this, uh, is Lady Elizabeth, they call her Lily, and she uh, grows up surrounded by this like opulence and she's from a wealthy titled family and um, her mother's only ambition for her is for her to like marry well and the mother is like all about appearances and uh, society's rules are very rigid and Lily wants more than that for her life and Edward wants more than that for his sister uh, because he sees like how empty and like vapid his other sisters are and he sees something in Lily that makes him think she wants more and I want to be able to provide her with more. And so that's why he hires Charlotte to be her tutor. Um, and sort of when Lily grows up, she decides that she wants to um, uh, help in the war effort. And this is during the First World War. Uh, Edward goes off to fight in the war and Lily wants to uh, help in her way as well. Um, before she leaves though, she uh, meets Edward's best friend, Robert Fraser, who is a doctor. And Robert is gonna go off and, and fight in the war uh, uh, as well. Um, not as necessarily a soldier, but as a medic, uh, as a surgeon. So they meet, and but the mother, of course, is like, does not approve and uh, does like all these schemes and lies to keep them apart. But they eventually meet again on the battlefield um, when she uh, is transferred to his unit because they have uh, kept up their friendship via letters and then it turns to more than friendship and um, it's just beautiful and you know Robert he he falls in love with her and she falls in love with him but Robert is you know, afraid for her because he loves her so much. He can't bear for it to, for anything to happen to her, and that fear drives him to be an asshat um, and push her away. And just it's just you you understand where he's coming from because of everything that he has lived with and seen in this war. Um, but you want to smack him, um, and it's just this beautiful, angsty, wonderful love story. Um, I completely adored it. I could not, like, this might be, this might, I, I, I'm loath to say because it's February still. But let's let's put a pin in it and call this 
my favorite read of 2021 so far. So far. Um, this might make my, uh, my 2021 wrap up of my favorite books of 2021. This, this, this might make it. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if the, like, there's um, others that uh, sort of nudge it out. But the, so far, Somewhere in France by Jennifer Robson. If you love historical World War I romances, or even World War II, because I'm a World War II romance girl, but wartime romances, love it. Definitely recommend. Um, yeah, so I'm still listening to uh, Clan Lands on uh, Audible, narrated by the gorgeous Sam Hewen and Grammy Tavish, uh, who, it, it's, it's wonderful. I'm loving it very, very much. They are wonderful storytellers. It's funny, um, very entertaining so far. Um, ebook, I haven't picked because, um, I finished, or I, I gave up on Sins of Borgia's, Sins of the House of Borgia yesterday? Yes. Um, and so I haven't picked my, uh, ebook that, um, I'm going to give a shot to, uh, yet, so we'll see, um, there. Uh, paperback, I am going to start <clears throat> the famously known Lisa Kleypas, Devil's Daughter, and this is the Sebastian, and I think Sophia's, Sebastian's Daughter? Um, and let's read the back blurb. Although beautiful young widow Phoebe, Lady, Lady Claire has never met West Ra Ravenel. Uh, she knows one thing's for certain. He's a mean, rotten bully. Uh, back in boarding school, he made her late, late husband's life a misery, and she'll never forgive him for it. But when Phoebe attends a family wedding, she encounters a dashing and possibly charming stranger who sends a fire and ice jolt of attraction through her. And then he introduces himself as no other than what? I cannot words than West Ravenel. Ravenel? West is a man with a tarnished past. No apologies, no excuses. However, from the moment he meets Phoebe, West is consumed by irresistible desire, not to mention the bitter awareness that a woman like her is far out of his reach. What West doesn't bargain for, bargain on, is that Phoebe is no straight-laced aristocratic uh, lady. She's the daughter of, strong, of a strong-willed wallflower who long ago eloped with Sebastian, Lord Satan and Sit, the most devishly, devilishly wicked rape in England. Before long, Phoebe sets out to seduce the man who has awakened her fiery nature and shown her unimaginable pleasure. Will their overwhelming passion be enough to over the obstacles of the past. Only the devil's daughter knows. Now, um, I had a discussion with somebody on Twitter the other day um, about how we can't get into like bully romances. Um, and then I realized that I picked this one up and it was the hero was a bully to her now dead husband. Um, but I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, because it's Lisa Kleypas and I trust her uh, Wallflower series, I'm willing to go along with it and see, like, what exactly, what exactly they mean by, like, bully and, like, because bully, like, back then, it's not the same as, like, what happens now. And so I'm willing to, like, give it a shot in a historical context in a way that I wouldn't. Um, and it's also the sense that it was her ex-husband, like, he didn't do it to her. I find I can't get behind romances where the hero has been a bully to the heroine in this day and age. Because, um, in this day and age, bullying has taken on such a more ugly, uh, dangerous um, vibe, like, it, it, it's just not the same, and honestly, 
in this day and age, there's no excuse for it. There's no excuse for somebody to be bullying another person because you know it's wrong. And they want to say things like, oh, like they're just being kids and kids don't know any better. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. In this day and age, a 12 year old boy or girl has enough know-how and isn't exposed enough, especially with like social media and, and, and movies and television shows and all this stuff, is exposed enough to know that bullying is wrong. So for me to read a romance about a, a contemporary guy who was this vicious bully to this girl and now they're adults and supposedly they fall in love with each other and I just, it just it does not work for me. However, in a historical context, um, I'm willing to go with it and also the fact that, that it's not, he's not bullying, he didn't bully her, he bullied her husband. Um, I'm willing to give it some, some, some latitude. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, so that's what I read. Uh, two DNFs and two absolute gems. So I'd say it was a good month. Um, so I think that's going to be it for this week. Um, I might do a, I did a, if you follow on my channel, I did a What to Watch during Droughtlander for uh, Bridgerton. I might do, once I finish seasons two and three, I might do a What to Watch during Droughtlander for the Borgias because look at how pretty, <laughs> look at how pretty that boy is. Nice Canadian, Canadian, uh, French Canadian actor. Francois Arnault is so pretty. Uh, and the gorgeous Holiday Granger, who, oh my god, she's so, so, ah, get back here. So, so gorgeous. And if you haven't seen her, her Lady Chatterley with Richard Madden, Rob Stark, oh my god. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> that was an enjoyable movie. Uh, then, of course, you have our gender, Jeremy Irons. And this redhead over here, get a, maybe a little bit of a better look at her. Uh, if you find that you recognize that redhead, she is Lot Verbeek, who Outlander fans will recognize as Galus Duncan, the witch, the witch who like burned all her, killed all her husbands. <laughs> um, yeah, she plays Jeremy Irons' lover. She plays the Pope's lover in this show. Um, and this was before Outlander. And she it plays like a very like sort of like similarly schemey sort of sly character to Galus. So I can totally see why um, she won the role of Galus after this show. Um, yeah, so I might do a what to watch during Outlander for uh, the Borgias once I've seen uh, episode uh, episode seasons two and three. I think it went for two seasons. Um, yeah, so that's going to be it for this week's video. Follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash author ejane. Like my Facebook page at facebook.com slash author ejane. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!